Good day, grade tens. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. Um, yeah, I hope that you've had a good day so far and that you've had a good week. We're on Wednesday, which is halfway through. Yay. Um, and that you're ready to learn some functions. In fact, you should already know these functions. What we're going to do is we're going to carry on in this lesson to do some normal exam, good exam paper questions. OK, and then what we're going to do is we're going to move on to trig functions if we've got enough time. If we haven't, then obviously we'll do this in the next lesson, but that's what our aim is. Our aim is to basically look at our exams and uh, these exam paper questions. OK, so that's what we're planning to do today. So it says the sketch and guys, if you're wondering why I'm doing so many exam paper questions, it's because I find a lot of my students are fine when it comes to looking at just hyperbolas or just straight lines or just whatever. OK, it's when they get into the exam situation and suddenly there's a mixture of an hyperbola and a straight line and maybe the hyperbola has been shifted some way etc etc then suddenly my students struggle so why i like going through the exam paper questions because it gives you a real feel of the type of questions you're actually going to be experiencing in the exams can okay, make sense right so now let's go through this it says the sketch below shows f and g the graphs f of x is one over x minus one so that's f of x over there and remember, since it's hyperbola, it's got two bits. So there's the other one. OK, and g of x equals ax plus q. So g of x is a straight line. OK, so it says points A is minus 1, minus 4, and B, 3, 4, lie on the graph g. So they lie on the straight line. The two graphs intersect at C and D. And do you see that D is on the x-axis, which is very interesting? Line BE is drawn so that it is parallel, sorry, parallel to the y axis. Okay, right, with E on F. Now it says show that A equals 2 and Q equals minus 2. Okay, so in other words, what they're really asking us to do is find the equation of the straight line. But it's quite nice because we've got given, we've been given two points, right? We've got B is equal to 3, 4, and A is minus 1, minus 4. So therefore, we can go, well, in that case, we can get the gradient. First of all, we can go M is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus x1 this point here is going to be let's call this point one and this point two it really doesn't matter which order we do this in so we can say okay that is going to be y2 is minus four minus four okay minus four minus four over this is minus one minus three which is minus 8 over minus 4, which is 2. OK, and let's just look at that. Remember what I said to you guys? I always want you guys to look at what is happening and see the shape of the graph. OK, and do you see that this is a straight line graph? Good. But more importantly, it's going up to the right, which means it should have a positive gradient, should have a positive gradient. OK, so therefore you've got y equals 2x plus C, okay. Now we need to find, so we've just proven that A equals two, Cha ching okay, right. Now we need to find the value of C, the Y cupped, which is the same as Q, right? So what we're gonna do is substitute either of these points into that equation, okay? So I don't mind which one we do, I'm gonna do three, four. So I'm gonna go four equals two times three plus C, so do you get that C is going to be 4 minus 6? So C is going to be minus 2. Therefore, Q is minus 2 because that's where C is sitting. So therefore, we've got that Y is equal to 2X minus 2 is the equation for our G graph, our G of X. OK, now it says determine the values of X for which F of X equals G of X. OK, so that's really easy. All we are doing is equating these two graphs. Um, if we look at it on the page, you can see that it's over here and over here. So do you see that 
x, yeah, the y value here is naught because it's on the x-axis. So we should be expecting at least one where y is naught, okay? So let's now equate the two. So the one is one over x minus one is equal to two x minus two. Okay, so the easiest way to solve for this is actually to multiply everything by x to get rid of the x at the bottom. So we can end up with 1 minus x is equal to 2x squared minus 2x. Okay, I've just multiplied everything by x to get rid of the de denominator with an x. So then let's take everything over to the one side. So we've got 2x squared minus 2x. When you take this across, it becomes a plus x. And then it becomes minus 1, that's 0. So 0 is equal to 2x squared minus x minus 1. So you end up with factors of x and x and 1 and... No, that's not right at all. Let's try again, shall we? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so do you agree the factors of 2x... Of, of, of x squared? are 2 and 1. Factors of x squared are 2 and 1, right? The factors of the last term are 1 and 1. This here tells you that we've got two different signs and yet this one tells you the big one has to be minus. So in other words, we're going to cross multiply. So we're going to get 2 times 1 and we're going to get 1 times 1. 2 times 1 gives you um, 1 times 1. So it gives you 2 and a 1, but we want minus 1 as answer. There has to be minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. So therefore we get minus and a plus. So therefore our brackets are 2x plus 1 and it's going to be x minus 1 because you write them from left to right. Write them from left to right, okay? equals 0, therefore 2x equals minus 1, or x equals 1, therefore x equals minus a half, or x equals 1. So therefore that value there we immediately know is going to be 1, 0, and the y value of this is minus a half. Now they haven't asked you for the y values, all they've asked you is for the x values. So therefore I'm just going to write in here that that is going to be minus a half. We don't know what the y value is because that's c there. Okay, so there we go. We finished that. Now it says, for what values of x is g of x greater than or equal to f of x? Okay, so we could solve it to find this, but what they're really wanting us to do is look on the graph. Okay, and what are they actually asking us to do? They're actually asking us to say, for which values, which y values of the straight line, okay, are going to be greater than the y values of the hyperbola. Okay, so, oh, sorry, I'm going to cough, hang on. Sorry. So, if we had to look at this on the graph, if we go along, let's go, let's do it this way, okay? So we want g of x to be bigger than or equal to f of x. So in other words, g of x has to be taller than f of x. So do you agree all the way from along here, the y value of g of x is bigger than the y value of f of x up to this point here, right? Yeah, the y values of the straight line graph become negative and the y values of the hyperbola become positive, so therefore that's the other way around. And over here, what happens? So yeah, the hyperbola is bigger, 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 bigger. And yeah, the straight line is bigger from there to there. The straight line is bigger. Yeah, the straight line is bigger. The y values of the straight line are bigger than the hyperbola. From here onwards, the hyperbola is higher on the graph. You can think of it as higher on the graph. So, do you agree that the values would be that x has got to be, okay, that's valid, so it's going to be greater than or equal to 1, or x has got to be smaller than 0, 
and greater than or equal to minus a half. It can't equal zero because the this is an asymptote of the hyperbola. So what does that mean? It means that the hyperbola cannot ever touch this axis, so therefore it will never have a value of zero. So therefore we have to say that it's true for x is smaller than zero and greater than or equal to minus a half and when x is bigger than one. It's quite a tricky question. I like that question. Now it says calculate the length of BE. They want the length of BE. Ooh, let's change color. So we want the length of BE. Okay, but they told us that this line here is parallel to the, to the y axis, right? So do you agree that means that the x value here is also at E? The x value is also 3. Okay, we just need to know the y value. We don't know what the y value is at E. Okay, and how can we get that y value? Do you agree we can get that y value by substituting into f of x equation because that there is on the f of x graph? So we can go f of x is equal to 1 over 3 minus 1, which is going to be minus 2 thirds. Do you agree? So then how long is this? Okay, they want to know the length of B. So, okay, yes, we could use the distance formula, but it's silly because this is straight line. So therefore, this is going to just be the four that went up plus the two thirds that went down. So therefore, the length of B is going to be four and two thirds. Okay, but I'm going to prove that to you by doing the distance formula, using the distance formula. So I'm actually going to do that. So I'm going to go, okay, we well, have the distance is equal to the square root of x. Sorry, it's supposed to be a 2, not squared. x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. Okay, that's the distance formula. So now we can say, okay, well, if that's the case, let's call this point, or it was point one before, so let's leave it as point one again and call this point two. So it is going to be the square root of, wait for it, three minus three all squared plus, this is minus two thirds minus four all squared. So what happens is you end up with this is goes away so you get the square root of minus four and two thirds all squared which ends up being exactly the same thing as what we've just said it ends up with plus or minus four two over three as your answer and obviously you kind of a negative length so therefore it is positive four over four and two thirds so you can see that if and if you use the distance formula you would have got exactly the same answer but if you've got any line that's ever horizontal i mean vertical or horizontal then you actually don't need to use the distance formula you just need to add up the units okay not too bad eh? right now it says write down the equation of h if h of x equals f of x plus three Okay, so all they want us to do is work out the new equation of h of x. If we take f of x and we add 3, so here is f of x. So we're going to take f of x, okay, and we're going to add 3 and that's going to be h of x. That's what they want us to do. So therefore h of x is going to be f of x. What is f of x? It is 1 over x minus 1. So it's 1 over x minus 1 plus 3, which just becomes 1 over x plus 2. And that's it. That's how easy that is. Okay. So it's not too bad. It's not too difficult to do that, eh? Right. Let's do another example. Okay. So do you notice that this one is a bit different because they haven't actually given us a drawing, okay? And they're expecting us to work some stuff out and it looks quite a lot different from what we normally do. So let's see what they say. And they say f of x equals ax squared plus c. Okay, so what is that? That's a parabola. Okay, that's a parabola. And it says f crosses the 
x axis at d minus 5 and d minus 1, where d is an element of real numbers. Okay, determine the value of d. Hmm, okay. So what they're saying is that we've got this parabola that may be a happy parabola or a sad parabola, but all we know is it crosses at these two points. It could look like that, or it could look like this, or it could look like this, or even upside down. Okay, we don't know, but we do know that one of these points might be d minus five, and if that's the case, then the other one's gonna be d minus one. And it says, we want to find the value of d. Okay, so what do we know? We know that if we multiply these, we have to get f of x in that format. Okay, so let's do that, okay? So we know that d minus five times by d minus one has to be equal to f of x, okay? Because they've told us this, they've said that it passes through d minus five and d minus one. So therefore we can say, well, we know that this is going to be, and remember f of x equals y, which in this case is going to be zero, because it's zero at both these points. Okay, do you understand? So, okay. If passive should x x at d minus five and d minus one, okay. So do you agree we can say, well, d squared, actually that's going to give you d equals five and d equals one. That's a silly question, because if you do this and you say, okay, fine, in that case, if that's the case, do you agree that d minus 5 times d minus 1 equals 0, therefore d equals 5 or d equals 1, okay? Oh, no. <laughs> I've read this all wrong. Okay, I'm, I haven't read it totally wrong. I've just been dwarf. Okay, right. They're saying it passes through D minus 5 and D minus 1. So, oh, sorry, I'm being really dwarf. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so this point here is D minus 5 and this point here is D minus 1. Do you agree? But do you agree that if we had to factorize these, if I told you that this was like, I don't know, minus 2 and this was 3, then do you agree that when we put it in a bracket, we'd go X plus 2 x minus 3 okay so we're going to have to do the same thing with the d's and d minus 5s and that we can't just go d minus 5 d minus 1 d is not in the replacement of the x-axis okay so in other words it says this bit here is going to be given as x minus d minus 5 that's one of the factors and the one is the other one is x minus d minus 1 that's the other factor, and they both are going to equal zero when you multiply them. Okay, think of it this way. If this is x minus 2 and this, and if this is two minus 2 and this is 3, do you agree we'd have x um, plus 2, x minus 3 equals zero? Okay, we at least know that because we know that this is going to equal zero or that's going to equal zero. Okay, so do you agree I could say, well, in that case, we've got x minus d plus 5 is going to equal to 0, or x minus d plus 1 is equal to 0. Okay, do you agree with that? Okay, so therefore we can say that d is equal to, hang on, let me, let me, let me just write this out a bit better for you. Um, so if we look at the first one, Okay, we've got x minus d plus 5 is equal to 0. Okay, or we have x minus d plus 1 is equal to 0. Okay, do you agree with that? Okay, so now we also know that therefore We know that therefore minus d is going to be equal to minus x minus x minus 5. So d is going to be equal to x plus 5 or 
D is going to be equal to minus X minus E minus one. So D is equal to X plus one. So then if we solve for this, we can say, well, D is equal to both of these things. So we can go X plus five is equal to X. That's not going to work, is it? Yeah, they, they've made a mistake. I'll tell you what the problem is. The problem is that normally when you do this, there should be an A in front of them, and we don't know what that A is. So basically, we need to think about this, um, and we need to have a look, see if we can actually fix that. Okay. Um, Okay, so we'll get back to this. Okay, I'll I'll have a look at the uh, at the question again. Maybe I didn't copy out all the information. Let me have a look at that and get back to you. Okay, right. So let's do this question. It says the graph of g of x equals a of x, a of x plus b. Okay, g graph of g of x equals a of x plus b, not drawn to scale. Okay, so there it is. It's a hyperbola. Pass it through the points p minus three two and t on the x-axis as shown below. It says write down the equation of the horizontal asymptote of g. Okay, well that's pretty easy because do you see that, that there is the horizontal asymptote and the horizontal asymptote's equation is y equals minus four. How do we know that? Because of the fact that it's going through minus four and why is it y equals minus four? Because every value along here, the y value is going to be minus four. Now it says find the value of A. Okay, so by writing down the equation of the horizontal asymptote, we've actually worked out what B is, okay? Because G of X is equal to A over X plus B, right? And the B means basically is your up and down shift. Okay, in this case, normally the X axis would be a horizontal asymptote, but now minus four is, so therefore we've got G of X is equal to A over X minus four, A over X minus four. Okay, so now what we need to do is find what the letter A is. Okay, that's fairly easy because all we're going to do is substitute in the point minus three, two, because G of X equals Y, right? So you've got two, equals a over minus three minus four. We take that across, it becomes two plus four is equal to a over minus three. So if we've got six is equal to a over minus three, multiply both sides by minus three. So you've got a is equal to negative 18. And then I want you to look at this and say, okay, well, what does that mean? That means that g of x is equal to negative 18 over x minus 4. Now, does this represent a negative hyperbola? Yes, it does, because it's in there. If it wasn't being shifted, it would be in the second quadrant and in the fourth quadrant only. So, yes, that looks good. Okay, now it says find the value of TO. So, what are they really asking? They're asking you to find out where it cuts the x axis. So to do that, what do we need to do? We need to let y equal naught. Okay, so let's do that. So we're gonna say, okay, fine. We've got naught is equal to minus 18 over x minus four. Therefore, four is equal to minus 18 over x. So if we cross multiply, we get x is equal to minus 18 over four, which is minus four and a half. Therefore, the length of TO is going to be four and a half. And you have to be careful with this grade 12, I mean grade 10s. You need to realize that what you're doing is you're actually, um, you're actually looking at, um, even though we worked out the value of X is minus four and a half, you actually realizing that the length is four and a half. And they've asked you for the length. So you don't write minus four and a half, you write the length of four and a half. Okay, right, so 
Um, okay, that's that lesson. I mean, that question. Right, let's go on. on. Um, it says, given the graphs of f of x equals ax squared plus q and g of x equals mx plus c, then it says, they intersect at points A and B. So you've got these two graphs. You've got a straight line graph and you've got the parabola. It says prove that A is minus 2 over 3. So they want us to prove that this parabola's value, x value, is minus 2 over 3. So if we look at this graph, we know that f of x, I wonder why it does that, is equal to ax squared plus q, okay? A is basically telling us whether it's an epigraph or sad graph, and it's um, the gradient, whereas Q is telling us where it cuts the y-axis. And if you look over here, we can see that it cuts it at 6. So we know now that we've got A, X squared, K plus 6 is equal to Y for F of X, okay? Now we've got this value here, which is the point minus 3, 0, when x is minus 3, y is 0. So we can substitute that into this here and get y, I mean get a. So let's do that. We've got 0 is equal to a times by minus 3 squared plus 6. So therefore we've got minus 6 is equal to minus well, it would be, it's plus 9. It's minus 3 times minus 3 is plus 9a. Therefore, a is going to be minus 6 over 9, which is minus 2 over 3 is a. Yay! So we've just proven that a is equal to negative 2 over 3. Excellent. Now it says determine the values of m and c. So now they want us to look at, again at the graph and at the information given to us and see if we can get the great equation for the straight line. So we know it cuts the y-axis, it cuts that y-axis at minus 6, so we can immediately go, well that means that g of x is equal to mx minus 6. So that's quite nice. Again, we've got this value here, which is minus 3, 0, which the straight line also goes through. So we can go, well, y is 0 is equal to m times minus 3 minus 6. So you've got 6 is equal to minus 3m. So m is equal to minus 2. Therefore, g of x is equal to minus 2x minus 6. Okay, so now we have got the values of M and C. Now they want the range of F. Now grade tens, what is the range? Remember the range I told you guys, the way I remember it is because the Y has got a loopy tail and G has a loopy tail, therefore we can say that the range is definitely with respect to Y. So what do we want? We want the Y values of the parabola for which the parabola exists. Okay, and it is as such, y is an element of real numbers, but y has to be smaller than or equal to 6, okay? Why is that? Well, if you look at it, can you see that it stops at 6 or it starts at 6 and it goes down? So forever, as we go down, okay, there is a y value, but anything above the 6, the graph does not exist. Okay, another way you could have written this is you could say y is smaller than or equal to 6 and bigger than negative infinity. Okay, for y is an element of real values. Okay, so there we go. Now it says prove that the x coordinate of b is 6. So they want us to prove, oh, the x coordinate of b. They want us to prove that x going to be is 6. So what do we know? We know that that's the other place that the straight line and the hyperbola meet. So the easiest way to do that is actually to find, the, take these two equations of the straight line and the parabola and equate them and find the two places where they meet. We know the one's going to be minus 3. So therefore, we can work this out. Okay, so let's carry on. Um, let's do this. So, okay, let's do this. We got y is equal to a is minus 2 over 3 x squared, and the q was what? It was 6 plus 6, 
and we're letting that equal minus 2x minus 6, the g of x, okay, so we don't need that. So let's multiply everything by 3 to get rid of this 3 here. So we've got minus 2x squared plus 18 is equal to minus 6x minus 18. Let's take everything onto the one side. So we've got negative 2x squared plus 6x plus 18. And when you take this across, it becomes plus 18 equals 0. Let's divide everything by minus 2. So you get x squared plus 3x plus 18 plus 18, well, it's going to be 18, equals 0. Okay, so now, oh, now it's dividing by a negative. So let me just quickly do that as well. If I do that, that becomes minus and that becomes minus. Okay, so that becomes minus and that becomes minus. So if we factorize this, we know the one's going to be a 3 x plus 3 because of the fact that this is already one of the places they cut okay but let's just check it so we've got factors of x squared are 1 and 1 factors of 18 are going to be 18 and 1 9 and 2 and 6 and 3 so we know it has to be the 6 and 3 so it has to be x minus 6 x plus 3 therefore x equals 6 or x equals minus 3. Ta-da! So we've just proven that the x component of b is 6, and then we don't know what the y value is. I haven't asked us yet. Now it says, hence determine the values of x for which f of x is bigger than g of x. So what are they asking again? They're asking for which values the parabola is higher on this graph than the straight line. And it would be from here all the way along to here. Do you agree over here, the parabola is lower on the graph? And yeah, the parabola is definitely lower on this graph. Okay, the y value is smaller. So therefore, let's see if we can write that now as an equation. It would be x, and they want just greater than, okay? So we're not including those two points. So x is going to be smaller than 6 and bigger than minus 3, okay? Right, now it says the graph is reflected. Now, officially reflections aren't in the curriculum, but I'm still going to go through it with you just to make sure that you know how to do it. Okay, it says the graph of f, this one here, is reflected in the x-axis to produce the graph of h. Determine the graph of h. Okay, so what happens is, think about it, it's going to be from 6, it's going to go to minus 6. So all that happens is this graph is going to do this. That's what's going to happen. It's going to become a happy graph. Do you agree? So what is actually happening? Do you agree? The only thing is that is affected is actually the y values. And the y value is going from a positive y value to a negative y value. So your original graph, the original graph said y was equal to, what was it, minus 2 over 3x squared plus 6, okay? But now instead of a positive y, you now have, you're multiplying everything by a minus. You now have minus y. So what does that become? This becomes, a, to become back to y, you'd have to go y is equal to 2 over 3x squared minus 6. All that you're doing is taking every y value and multiplying it by minus 1. You're flipping it across the x-axis. Okay. Right, so those at the end are the normal functions. Well, when I say normal functions, I mean as in not your trigonom trigonometric functions. Now we're going to start going through the um, sine graph, cos graph, and tan graph. And we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did in the last couple of lessons. We're going to look at how they change according to what we do. Okay. So firstly, we have to find the values of sine theta. And it is a bit of a pain um, because we're going to have to do it using our calculator. So sine of naught degrees. So let's go find our calculator. Okay. And again, Oh, no, it's not going to work for me. Let's go here. There we go. Okay. There we go. Much better. 
So now, again, I'm going to say to you, grade 10s, please make sure that your calculator is on degrees. Otherwise, you're going to get a horrible answer. So we're going to go sine, sine of 0 equals. So sine of 0 equals 0. Okay. Now, let's do sine of 30 degrees. Okay, so it is going to be a bit tedious, and I'll show you what happens. But we do have a pattern. Okay, so now, sorry. So now we're going sine of 30 degrees equals a half. Okay. Um, sine of 45 degrees equals root 2 over 2, that does not help me at all. Where's the SD button? 0 0.707, 0, 0.71, sine 60, hmm. which is going to be 0 0.87, 0 0.87, and sine 90. Okay, I'm not going to do this the whole way through because we actually don't have time for this. Um, but what I would suggest you guys do to really get to grips with your sign graph is that you actually do this. Okay, you practice by doing this and that's one. Sign of 90 is one. Now, if I went sign of 180, I'll get back to zero. Sign of 270 would be minus one and sign of 360 would be back to zero. So what happens is, and I'm going to let this be one, okay, is you end up with a sine graph that goes through one, 180, minus one, and back to 360. Okay, so it goes up through here and down and down. And there we go. So when we said that sine of 30 was a half, there you go. Sine of 30 is a half. Sine of 60 is 45 is over there somewhere, which is 0 0.71. And sine of 60 is 0 0.87. Okay. So basically, this is supposed to be a really pretty perfect sine graph. Unfortunately, I struggle to draw them big beautifully okay but this is your sine graph okay now your amplitude is how far it travels from the line of zero okay in other words from the x-axis in this case the amplitude is going to be one the value of the amplitude is one because it is going that far away from it's going one unit away from the x-axis okay now the range is different the range is again how far it stretches across the x the y axis okay so do you agree it stretches if i had to take a pen it goes all the way from top up here all the way down to the bottom there the maximum y value is one and the minimum y value is one so therefore this range is going to be y is smaller than or equal to 1 and break and equal to minus 1. And obviously y is an element of real numbers. The period. Now this is different because in every other graph you've never had to worry about a period. The period of, is the number of degrees okay, to complete one full um, before it starts repeating itself, so one full wave, okay? Or before it starts repeating itself, wavelength. And in this case, it is 360 degrees. Because what would happen now is that after this, the graph would start going up again. Oh, and I'm doing horrible things there to go up again like that, okay? So therefore, we could say that from there, 0 to 360 degrees is one, the period. The period is the number of degrees it takes to complete one full cycle. That's not, let's not say wavelength, that's more like science. Let's say one full cycle. Okay, understand. Now, what happens 
if I now have two sine theta, okay, do you agree that if I had sine theta here, yeah, what would this be? This would be zero, one, zero, minus one, and zero. This, so therefore, if I had y is equal to sine theta, my y value would be zero, one, zero, minus one, zero. So what do you think would happen if I now had y is equal to two sine theta? Okay, obviously zero times by two is gonna be zero. So what do you think 90 is gonna be? Do you agree that 90 would be two times one, which is two? Let's check it. Let's put that in our calculator and check that we're right. So in this case, we've got two sine 90. And we're right, okay? So it takes whatever value we had for the sine of 180 and we multiply it by two. So that there is going to be a zero. That's gonna be minus two and that is gonna be zero. So in this case, if this is one and this is two and this is minus one and this is minus two, do you agree it's going to go, oh, so I'm aiming for there, and there, and there, and there. Do you agree it's gonna go up and then it's going to come down through the 180. Why does that do this to me? Through the 180, just to make my life miserable. Down to it and then back up. Okay. So therefore, do you see, and I'm sorry, if, and guys, listen, just one more thing with before we go. Um, you guys need to remember that my graphs, I can't erase, if I, if I try to erase a portion of this graph, then it ends up erasing the whole thing and then I have to start again. So, but I do not want to see graphs looking like this in your tests and your exams. I, you, I also don't want to see anything that looks like that where you've colored things in to make it look pretty. No, what you guys actually need to do is what I'm going to show you. You actually need to erase and you need to redraw. The bonus for you guys is that you're erasing, if you're using a pencil, which is what you should be using, is you only need to erase the wobbly bit and then you can make it look pretty. Okay. So I would suggest that you remember to draw these things in pencil. Okay, so I've run out of time. So I will carry on with this lesson on, on trig functions in the next lessons. And we'll be looking at how different things affect your sine graphs and then your cos graphs and then your tan graphs. And then we're gonna do questions again on your trig functions. And I will get back to you about that other question. Have a great day.